Let's start our project by creating levels for our building. Let's go to the east elevation and we currently have level 1 and level 2 as our standard. Let's rename our level 1 to be first floor and the best way to do this is by using the capital letters. And yes, you want to press yes for changing the corresponding views. Let's make sure it's going to be about 12 feet high. From here onwards, go to the architecture, level, pick lines, and offset it by 15 feet. By doing so, we're going to create another level, another level. So we have our first level, second level, third level, and the fourth level will be our rooftop deck. So the third level, we're going to name it third floor. And the level four will be our rooftop deck. Let's start by creating another level that will be labeled our top of footing. We're going to have set our first floor by 16 inches and 3 eighths lower. So we're going to pick the line, make sure we write 16 and 3 eighths here. This level five is going to indicate the top. Let's change it, the top of footing. In case you see that there might be some overlap in between your levels, you can click there is a like an add elbow, which essentially allows you to create a level and stretch it out the, the way you would like while still keeping it at the same location. See the top of footing appear over here. And when we go here, obviously there is nothing in here. So let's start with creating a new wall assembly that is going to essentially make up our foundation wall. Let's go to walls, architectural. Now let's select an existing one that we're going to modify to be what we need it to be. Let's start with a generic 8 inch masonry. Go to edit type, duplicate, and let's call it generic 8 inch CMU and in parentheses 2. Once you've done this, go to structure and you, you already see that we have a concrete masonry unit, which is what CMU stands for, uh, set at 7 inches and five eighths. However, we are going to need two of these and in between them we're going to have a mortar joint. So what we're going to do is we're going to create two more elements in between the core boundary elements. This one is going to be three eighths and this one is also going to be seven and five eighths. However, the first one, the structure one at the very top, is also going to be a concrete masonry unit. So you select this and essentially this is what you are going to see in your section if you if you will look at it you'll see on one side cmu a gap on, on the other side the cmu and the floor plan this is going to appear like this press ok at this point we need to set up our base and top constraints our base constraint is exactly what we need it to be the top of footing because our foundation wall is going to sit on top of our footing and our top constraint is actually going to be our first floor. For the sake of simplicity, let's create a square building. So let's go to walls, go to the rectangle line over here, and just right now draw a random rectangle. Again, it doesn't have to be precise. What we're going to do next is we're going to add dimensions to this rectangle, and by adding dimensions, we're going to change its size. So let's go to annotate, aligned, and select not the center lines but the wall faces. Go to the outer faces of two out of four walls and let's click on one of these walls and change it to 80 feet on one side and 80 feet on the other side. Now we have a square building that has 80 feet from one end to another. But again if we go to the 3D view we're only going to see those one foot and four and three eighths of an inch double seam you wall. To draw the footing would be actually by going to the structure elements and there you see under the foundation you have either isolated or wall. If you hover over it for a long time it will give you an example of what it is. So we want to use this tool. But let's click on this and we can see there is already a footing that is available which is three feet wide by tw 12 inches deep. For the purposes of this video, it's actually going to be pretty good footing. We're not going to design the footing exactly for this condition, but let's just go with what we have. 
And now uh, press tab, select all walls and click one time. And what it does, it automatically aligns that footing, as you can see, in the middle of our foundation. So if you were to look at this from the uh, elevation point of view, this is your first floor. This is your foundation wall and this is your footing. Along the way, we're, we might also end up adding additional footings, uh, depending on the locations of our, of our walls and the load bearing points. At this point, let's go ahead and create a new wall type. Let's go to the first floor. In this case, we're still not able to see our foundation uh, or top of our footing. So another way of, for us to, to be able to see it, where we can go to the top of footing, where we can see the outline of our foundation wall. Let's from here, go to the walls, select the walls and create a new wall type. But let's first pick a base point, which would be the exterior brick on CMU. Click on this one, add a type, duplicate, uh, let's say brick on CMU and in parentheses, arc 271. And please make sure that you label your walls the same way that I do. Once you do this, go to edit. Uh, let's make a few changes. Finish our brick right here is going to be three and five eighth. A thermal air layer, which is going to be a gap between our brick and our insulation, exterior insulation. Let's make it two inches. And let's make our rigid insulation also be two inches. Let's assume we're going to, to design the building in a pretty um, warm climate. Metal furring, we can actually remove this. And we can remove the finish on the inside because we are going to have an exposed CMU block on the inside. One of the benefits of this is it is it requires far less maintenance, far less cost in order to put drywall on top of the CMU. So we're, essentially we're trying to cut down on the cost by utilizing CMU for our interior finish. And now we end up with the total thickness of our uh, wall assembly being at one foot, three and a quarter. Press OK. And now we're going to design this specific assembly from the second floor to the rooftop deck, because from the first floor to the second floor, we're going to have a slightly different one. So from the second floor is going to be our base constraint. Make sure the base offset is zero. And our top constraint will be the rooftop deck. And we're going to offset it by four feet. And I will explain in the later videos why. So essentially your unconnected height should be 34 feet. Now, what's very important is for us to align our new wall assembly with the existing foundation wall. The way to do this is under the location line, you want to click on finish face exterior or interior. If you click on the top left corner, drag it to, to the right. And just keep on repeating this process. You're not going to see any changes in this view because we're drawing these walls very high above. So we're not going to see them. But if you go into your, let's say, second floor, here you can see those walls being drawn. Let's now make sure that we drew them correctly. First, let's make sure that all the walls are facing towards the outside. You can see those two arrows facing outside of the interior portion. Here, here, here and here. If it would have been facing inside and we would have seen something like this, which is not which is not what we want. Let's control Z. And let's make sure that our dimensions for these walls are the same as for the bottom walls. Let's dimension everything. I use hotkeys for this. So 80 feet here and outer edge to outer edge, 80 feet here. Now let's make sure they align. Let's go to the 3D view. And Let's rotate it, let's say, or an elevation actually would be better. Now you can see that there is absolutely no difference between our foundation wall and our top walls. Now, as you can see, we have a gap between our first floor and second floor. Let's fix this. Let's go to our top of footing again. Let's press on walls. Click on the one that we already had. The brick on CMU, add a type, duplicate. And now instead of brick on CMU, we're going to say brick on concrete. Go to edit. And at this point in time, we're actually going to remove our concrete masonry unit 
material and replace it with concrete cast in place. And we're going to keep it at seven and five eighths of, of an inch for now. That is not a big deal uh, because we're actually reducing there's actually going to be a mortar joint that is very typical for these types of conditions but for now for the sake of this video we're going to keep the seven and five eighths of an inch however in reality it is typically eight inches the reason we're going to keep it seven and five eighths of an inch because we want to make sure that in this specific project all of our walls are going to align and we're not going to worry about trying to offset some walls versus the others because this is going to essentially create more headache for you and for me when I will be grading your work. So let's keep it at 7 and 5 eighths of an inch. 3 eighths of an inch is not going to do anything for us necessarily. Press OK. OK, now that we have created this new wall assembly, let's do the same thing. Let's set our base constraint to first floor and our top constraint to second floor. This way our unconnected height should be 12 feet. Once you've done this, make sure that you finish face exterior. And let's go around. And this time you can kind of see the outline of the wall that you're creating. And now because it is right above our top of footing, since we're cutting through it, it will appear with a thicker outline than our foundation. So let's do this. Let's extend it all the way to the corner actually. And what we end up having is this wall aligns with this wall and aligns with this wall, which is exactly what we want. So the way you want to try to look at our section of our building is let's go. We can go to the first floor, go to view, click on section, and we're actually going to cut a section through our building even at this point. Let's go from left to right. Make sure that this faces either direction. It doesn't really matter. And now right click and go to view. What you're seeing is that we're cutting through our walls already. And if you go over here under the thin lines and press it, all the thick lines, all the line weights are going to disappear and everything is going to look the same. So here you can see this is our footing, our foundation wall. This is our concrete wall assembly. This is our CMU wall assembly going all the way up to the rooftop deck. If you want to see things in more detail, you can do so by clicking here and going into fine. This way you can actually see the assembly of your structure. You can see the CMU walls, you can see the concrete, and you can see other things as well. Now at this point in time, what we need is we need a floor. And we're going to have a concrete slab on our first floor level. So let's go to our first floor level go to architecture floor and let's make sure that our floor is selected appropriately we are in need of four inch concrete floor right now we all, we're not quite seeing what we're looking for so let's change one of the existing ones so let's go to the three inch lightweight concrete edit type duplicate let's change this to four inch concrete slab. Once we've done this, go to structure, edit, concrete lightweight. We're going to change to concrete cast in place. We're going to change the thickness to four inches and we're going to remove the structural deck completely. So we're essentially just designing concrete slab, which is four inches, which technically below has other things such as a uh, waterproof membrane, and gravel and so on. But for now, we're going to stick with four inch slab. Press OK. Now what is important is for us to click on the interior outline of our walls. So I go to rectangle, go from the interior edge of one side and go to the other side, just like this. I selected everything correctly. Press OK. Press don't attach usually. That's your best choice. And now if you go through our to our section view, what you're going to see is that now we have created our four inch concrete slab right at the same level as our first floor. Here I want to make sure that you can see our levels. 
this is our concrete slab right here. In 3D view, it's right here. Now, this is a very basic shell of our building. We still yet to create the second floor and the third floor and the roof, rooftop deck, etc. But we have created now the first floor slab and the walls around it. Now, at this point, let's go ahead and try to break down our building into several components. Let's again show the dimensions. On the north, we have 80 feet and on the west, we also have 80 feet. So we have a square building. And let's make sure that we can support the second floor and the third floor. Typically, it's very difficult and very expensive to design a system that will span from one end of the building to the other. That's why we're going to try to break it down into smaller components. For instance, instead of us uh, designing a joist or a beam spanning from the left side to the right side by 80 feet, which is going to be massive, we're going to break it down into smaller components by creating another set of columns or supports that are going to transfer the loads down. So let's go ahead and do this. Go to the architecture tab, grid, and select the middle portion of the wall simply by, it's not going to be a very precise middle, but essentially the way you can find the middle is by hovering over a wall and it will automatically snap to the middle of that wall. So go ahead and do so for the northern wall. Make sure you extend the grid line past the outline of the building. And let's copy it, uh, let's say every 20 feet. And the last one is going to also appear in the center line of my wall right here. Now I have placed five grids starting from the left to the right side and all of them are named automatically. Now I'm going to do the same but going from west to east or east to west. Grid, the center line of my wall, snap it to the left side, extend it. Let's change the uh, horizontal column grids to have letter convention to have letter naming convention versus the numbers so that we don't get confused for instance let's make this our a our beginning and let's again do the same thing Sp spend it 20 feet since we have a square building another 20 feet And the last one is going to end up in the center of our walls. So in this case, what we're doing is that we're showing that in the locations D2, where those two grid lines meet, we're going to put a support for the rest of the floors of our building. Now let's go ahead and place columns in the middle of our building that will serve as a support for our second and third floors. The way we're going to go about doing this is go in the architecture tab column and select structural column here you already have a few options for a steel column there's a w10 by 33 and w10 by 49 10 refers to the depth versus 33 or 49 refer to the pounds per linear foot so meaning the 10 by 49 is much heavier than the 10 by 33 so let's go with the standard with the standard one 10 by 49. Let's select the, that column and you already see in your options you have at columns, slanted columns, vertical columns, which is what we want. And let's place add grid, which is, if you can read uh, the description on the screen, it says create stru structural columns at the intersections of selected grid lines, which is exactly what we want to do. Let's do this and now let's select the grid lines that we want to have the columns. So I'm pressing control and selecting all the grids in the middle, not the one, E, five or A, because those are at the corners. And at the corners right now, we don't need any columns since we already have walls there. In this case, we're only concerned about the middle. I press finish and what it does, it automatically creates those columns. They may not be visible in this view, but if we go into the 3D view, you can see something appears here. And those are the columns. Most likely our offset or our base and top constraints were very small. That's why they appear so little. Let's go ahead and select all of them. The easiest way for you to do so is click on one and press SA. 
for select all. Now you can see we have nine columns created. And let's change their offset or their base level to be from the first floor to the rooftop deck because they're going to spend pretty high. And in the section view, you can see those columns sitting on the slab, which actually we're going to, to create a foundation wall with a footing below so that we're going to ensure they're going to have support themselves and they're going to stop at the rooftop deck. So let's go ahead and create the footing for our structural columns. The way we're going to go about doing this is pretty similar to the way we've done it for the foundation walls. We're going to go under structure and in this case do not select wall but select isolated or pile cap footings. However, we have to keep in mind that our steel columns need to actually extend to the top of footing because our footing level is should be consistent throughout our entire project so that we don't have change of elevations. So again, let's go to a 3D view, press and click on one of the columns, press SA, and let's change the base level to be top of footing. Once we have done this in a section view, you can see it extends down to the top of footing and going through the slab. Looking at the top of footing, where we now can see those columns appear, Let's change the thin lines to appear thicker. This way you can see vividly with thick lines where the columns are. Now let's click on isolated. You can see there is no structural foundation families found. So let's go ahead and load them. You're automatically shown the directory of all the files you can pull in into your project. The reason why you have a category or a specific location for them, because if you had all of these files already in your project, the project would have uh, would have been very slow and the project size uh, like the file size would have been very large as well so here under the english imperial we're actually going to look for structural foundations and here we're, what we're looking for is to have a foundation that is going to suit our needs so let's click on the footing rectangular click open and let's make sure it's going to be a square footing because right now it's, it's, it says 72 by 48 by 18 and if you remember our last one was 12 inches deep so let's change this one duplicate now let's change it to let's say 48 by 48 by 12. again this is just an, an approximation and a structural engineer would determine the exact size of each of the footings and they're not always going to be the same so the thickness is going to be 12 inches the width is going to be four feet and the length also four feet now that we have done this let's go ahead and go to the structure again isolate it now we have our footing selected now let's place them at grids as well now we select the grids that we are going to to use pretty much the same grids we selected when we the columns and now it's going to place those at the right location and obviously right now you're not able to see anything because it is located at a footing level so go underneath your building and now you can see those pads or footings sticking out beneath the lab now at this point in time all we're concerned about is trying to build out a shell or the main structure of our design now, all of this is going to be changing as we go along, but for the most part, our location of grids, our elements, our assemblies are going to remain the same. Now that we have built the first floor, the footings, the columns, let's go ahead and uh, design the second floor and third floor flooring, which should be exactly the same as we have had on the first floor. However, in this case, instead of it being a solid four inch concrete slab, we're actually going to design a slightly different system. Actually, one of our floors already has that system. Let's go, go ahead and go to the second floor and click on the architecture floors. Yes, always make sure you save the project. So this is our standard one, the one that we have created. But let's go back to the three inch lightweight concrete on two inch metal deck. Actually, this is a five inch assembly because 
essentially what it is it is it is concrete poured onto the uh, onto the corrugated metal decking decking is this again this shaped metal panel that is going to hold the weight of the concrete so we're going to use this assembly because this is very standard press ok and let's again put this in between our interior faces of walls just like this on the second floor and press ok and try not to use the attach command for now now that we have put this on the second floor let's go ahead and copy it to clipboard and paste it immediately to selected levels and what it does it uh, copies the same elements that we have selected right now in our clipboard we put them on the levels in the same location without us having to necessarily go and copy it and be in that specific floor plan so we have created one for the first floor second floor now we need one for the third floor and the rooftop deck let's click on the third floor control a rooftop deck and since we're going to have the same beginning of our assembly uh, our floor assembly for the rooftop deck as for the third floor we selected both of them press ok and let's go to our 3d view let's hide one of the walls by pressing hh and now you can see us hide the bottom one as well so this is our four inch concrete slab we have created originally this is our five inch slab we created on the second floor this is the same copy of the same um, slab on the third floor and on the rooftop deck we obviously have to create the support for that flooring since it's not actually going to be hanging in the air trying to hold on to the columns over here so let's reverse back uh, our temp our hiding or the elements that we just hid by pressing at the bottom that looks like glasses and click on the reset temporary hide or isolate let's go to the section view now we can see our floors let's go ahead and create the support for those floors and the way we're going to do so is using steel the way we're going to do so is going through structure beam and essentially right now we're going to do design a beam or draw or model beams that span from one column to another and from a column to an exterior wall and beams are going to be holding the main portion of the load of our slabs so let's go ahead and uh, go to not a section actually go to the first floor click on beam and we already have a pre-selected 12 by 26 beam now in this case the way we're going to, to design our plans is we have to spin our joist in a certain direction and we have to spin our beams in the opposite direction so for instance in this case we will have our beam spin from column grid D to column grid 2 from the from the western side to the eastern side right here so I go from the inner face of the of the exterior wall to the center line of our column right now we're not going to be able to see anything in this view however if we go under the 3d and hide different walls so I select the different walls and press H double H however it's not located in the right location it actually has to be right underneath our floor right here and there are several ways of doing so we can either move it individually like if I go to my section I can move it to the right location by pressing move again from here and make sure you don't have the constraint checked but you do have the disjoint checked and I not want to see the line weights again I have to select it M constraint not selected then disjoint selected go from the top of the beam to the bottom of your slab above actually a portion of it is sticking out into our slab so let's go ahead and uh, and drop it a little bit lower so we can see the end of our beam again constraint not checked here's the top of our beam and the top of our beam has to be right underneath of our slab above right here 
on the left and the right side you can extend it to make it appear as if it actually passes through the wall which is great but right now we're not going to be too concerned about this in a 3d view if you change the camera angle it looks like this again a con a beam a steel beam supporting a portion of your concrete slab above so the way you can actually see those beams in in the plan view you have a project browser category called structural plans if you go there and you do not see a plan for a specific portion of your design such as the second floor the way we can create one is by going to view plan views structural plan and it will give us an option to create views that have not been created before or you can duplicate an existing one which we do not want let's create both structural plans for a second and first flo floors now on the second floor plan of the structural plans we're not going to be able to see it unless we change the view range but let's actually ch look at it from the first floor plan first floor of the structural plan right now it's also not visible and we make sure that our detail level is at fine and our view range associated level first floor let's make it 12 feet at the top and cut plane let's make it 11 feet and now yes we can see our beam spanning from the western side to the eastern side let's go ahead and copy the same beam all along this d grid make sure you copy from the edge to the center line and if needed try to trim it by go by by clicking on the circle and putting it in the center line of the column the same goes here now that's in the center line of the column we can copy it from the grid line to the grid line and to the grid line and again pull it back as needed now that we have created beams let's make sure that they are in the same height yes they are let's create the same beams for the rest of our grids below for c and b copy click on the d grid go down to c and go down to b now the same concept is going to apply for the rest of the levels let's click on any one of the beams and press sa for select all and let's copy to clipboard paste align to select the levels click on the second floor for now when you do so you will see those beams appear on the second floor however they're lower than our slab simply because our height of floors is different so let's go ahead and pull it up let's see the difference between the first and second floor and the second floor and the third floor is three feet so let's move them exactly three feet up now they're right below our slab and this time we can actually press co for copy go from the third floor level to the rooftop deck level now we're almost finished with our support for our floors the only thing that is left for us is to actually design the joists that will span from north to south and the way we're going to go about doing this is simply by going to structure and click on beam system in this case what it does it creates uh, a beam system that are have sp correctly spaced uh, joists in this case joists that are going to go from left side to the right side now usually joists have a smaller size uh, than the beams however in this case we're not going to be too picky on this project and we're going to keep the beams the same 12 by 26 so let's do the uh, the sketch beam system go from the corner and actually let's actually select the re rectangle go from the corner of our e1 grid line to the corner of our beam on the right side so from here to here and let's click on beam direction to be not the longer version because this way we're going to be designing a beam where a joist going from this side to this side but we want from this side to this side so let's click beam direction select the shorter line 
and let's make the spacing be not six feet but four feet which will be the four feet on center let's see if we have any other options no we don't have any other options so for now let's keep it at w12 by 26 and apply okay and now you can see the spacing between them is perfect four feet on center and we can see all of these beams already created for us let's make sure uh -huh, they're not on the right level and let's move them up by 12 feet by clicking on the elevation from level now you can see that they're overlapping with the slab but this is not what we want we would like them to be right underneath our slab and so, since the upper slab is five inches thick we're going to actually decrease the elevation by five inches to 11 feet and seven inches now that we have them aligned you can see we have a main beam and a secondary beam or what is referred to as a joist now we're going to go to the first floor structural plan make sure whenever you click on it you can see the outline of every single beam let's go ahead and copy the beam system from e to d and let's now resize the boundary of our beam system make sure it's centered on the beam of the d grid and on the beam of the c grid just like this press ok and now let's copy the same beam system from d to c and from c to b just like this now that we have created our beam system that is supporting all of our second floor let's go to the structural plan again click on any of the beam systems make sure you highlight all of the beams in that system press sa for all let's copy them and paste to a specific level in this case to the second floor level now going through the section we can see again that they are offset three feet lower than the slab above so let's add three feet to our 11 foot seven inches let's make it 14 feet seven inches and that's perfect and let's copy the same for our rooftop deck by copy to clipboard paste align the selected levels third floor now that we have finished doing this let's look at what what we've got we've got the rooftop deck floor we've got the system of beams and joys supporting that floor same goes for the second floor for the first floor and the slab below we have designed the exterior walls we have designed the columns at this point in time we can start laying out our floor plan we can start adding doors windows and adding textures and so on stay tuned for the next video